have all kinds of crazy soldering irons and microscopes and, and you know very fine tools that you're using to do this. Right. This seems like an incredibly intimidating thing. It does seem like that, but it's it's really not, you know. And I would say that that not every component is feasible to replace. You know, it, it's technically replaceable, but it's not feasible, you know, on a on a board like a, like an iPhone, you know, uh, in specific, or even this one. Like if we kind of look really closely at this board, you can see that there's like a black glue looking stuff right apple's been using that more and more yes and this stuff is called underfill and it kind of makes sense from a design perspective that as things get smaller and you're trying to like fit more complexity into a tighter package that you do more uh use more of these sort of vulgar array chips we we're just talking about mm -hmm. now those guys have to sit on the sort of array of these spheres you know balls that have to make contact with both right. the board and the chip so if you imagined dropping that phone, you know, on the sidewalk, it would be really easy to kind of disrupt you just get one, one little crack. That's yeah. what killed the Xbox 360. The red ring of death is caused by cracks in the ball grid array on the graphics chip, and they just stop working. Well, we'll have to fight about that later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but the that you know that that is a, a really important topic, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this idea of chip failure and mm -hmm. what to do about it because it really influences repair, repair. So like BGA chips that are dropped, absolutely what you just said is totally true. You could get a cold joint, you know, if you drop it. But people don't really drop the Xbox and right. they don't really drop the MacBook that much, you know. Right. So what happens is you can have a failure of the chip itself. So the, the, the inherent chip, the silicon wafer that the thing is made out of failed. can fail, and it does fail. It fails because of heat. In the iPhone, it happens all the time. In the iPhone 5S, you're going to have failure of the U2 IC chip that controls the charging logic, mm -hmm. not because of a drop, but because of actual failure of the Thermal chip itself. Yeah. yeah, an over voltage can just damage it, okay. right? So knowing sort of the history of the of the device really helps guide your repair. Mm -hmm. So for a PlayStation that has a graphic problem, it's probably not a cold solder joint. If you have the same, you know, an iPhone 5S that was dropped, it probably is a cold solder joint. Got it. Yep. And so there's this whole like you know big fight out there about um, you know how do we address BGA failures? And there's you know a lot of you know folks that are trying to reheat chips and things like that. And the problem we talked earlier uh, you know today about uh, you know sort of different types of solder and things like that. And you know if you were to actually heat up a BGA chip that had not suffered drop damage. So it doesn't have a crack in the lead-free joint. Mm -hmm. But if you heat it up to a temperature that's like far below what lead-free solder will flow at, so let's say you heat it up to like, you know, 100 and 180 degrees, but not 217. Right. See, this is Celsius. So this mm -hmm. is like, you know, um, far, far, uh, you know, your, of, your home oven and your, and your hair dryer can't possibly heat up to like lead-free solder flow temperatures. So um, if you were to heat up that chip, it does tend to work, you know, and that's sort of like, you know, well, what's up with that? Because we think that we're like reflowing. We think but we're reflowing. It's actually something inside the. Yeah, you know, it's kind of yeah. like you're just sort of heating up. The chip itself has some of the eutectic solder, the leaded solder in inside it. it. Yeah. Right. You've so got you the can, grids inside. Yeah. The, so you yeah. can kind of like make the chip, chip itself better, you know, but it's not really a lasting durable repair. Absolutely. Well, that, you know, that's what we're seeing happen. But yeah. there's no way you can get new ICs for those machines. Right. So, so that's that's tough. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know. So the right repair for that is to replace the ice is to replace that BGA chip. If you can't find it, that's and that's, that's the case. Nice. I mean, that's why a lot of these board level repairs make sense because you have a board for an iPhone. You can't go out there and buy new boards for, right. for these things. Right. Uh, and and even if you could start with a bare board, you can't get all the components with the right firmware on them. So you have to do a right. physical repair to right. the board. Right. So, and, and just sort of, you know, knowing your history makes a lot of sense. If I have this phone here, let's say this phone had a U2 chip failure because of a charging using a non-Apple charger and it kind of had some sort of over-voltage situation. Well, that means that the Touch IC chip is fine. It was never dropped. It has no reason that there would be anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So I could harvest the Touch IC chip Got it. and, and put it, it in another. some other phone that was right. dropped. Right. You know, so it so it does make sense. You know, if you kind of really think, is it a chip failure or is it a failure of the balls? You know, like what right. what's going on? And you know, and 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 really think 
rather than just like rely on the internet because the internet is the internet lies constantly you know it is it is you know just full of misinformation and misguided stuff you know well that's why i fix it everything is an edit button and everything is <laughs> voting right. up and down so that's the bad right. information that's right. gets voted down and over that's right and it and it is the repair community's responsibility i don't expect for everybody i don't think that 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 you know we have a responsibility to know everything on day one right. you know but the repair community as we know better do better and that means it's your responsibility right your responsibility to edit you right know? And, and, and vote and learn. And I mean, the nice thing about something like this phone, so an incredibly complex phone, huge amount of engineering, there's a relatively few number of common failures. So you don't have to learn how everything works, right? right. You can just learn about the half dozen right. or so very right. common failures on an iPhone 5S. Right. You can easily be successful, you know, by just sort of saying, I'm going to address these sort of patterns of failure because there's so many iPhones. You can make a successful business just, you know, learning some technical proficiency to be able to kind of address the common stuff. You know, when this, you know, like on this, uh, on this mini retina, when that power chip fails, which it does, you know, this thing kind of can get a drop. So here's a question. If this thing was dropped, what's the right repair? Replacing the chip, reballing the chip, reflowing the chip. What would you say? I would probably say reflowing the chip and I would yes. guess. Yes, because okay. of the drop, right? Yeah. Drop means it's probably mm -hmm. a, a cold joint there. You know, so one of the mm -hmm. balls just is not making connection. Mm -hmm. So if I could reflow right. the solder, make a good connection, the chip itself is fine, right? Okay. What's the right repair if the if this is you know coming in and saying I left it on my car dash and it's got you know like a temperature warning and now it doesn't work at all? So maybe that's a bad IC. Yeah, exactly. Because the okay. heat damaged it, it internally. It's not going to be, okay. you know, smart, smart. <laughs> this is smart. why I hang this out with guy you, is so smart. I can learn to. But I'm just guessing. <laughs> I just see my pants. Yes. So fantastic. But you know, absolutely right. You know. So, um, so what we were saying here, though, is you can see this sort of underfill. Underfill makes sense because you do drop phones a lot, mm -hmm. and so you know, it does make sense from a design perspective to you know to sort of problem solve and say, well, how can we get better contact and less damage from drops? And the Apple design. We're not actually trying to make repair a giant pain for everyone. They were trying to say, you know, hey, let's make a better joint. We so. see this a lot, and it's a repairability versus durability trade off. Right. And in this case, maybe it's it's correct to err on the side of durability. Right. Maybe. So, right. But it certainly makes makes microselling yes. harder. Yes, it does. And sometimes just not feasible. You mm -hmm. know, so I wouldn't want to kind of create the impression that like you can replace any chip. It's not feasible to replace certain chips that are just like in an area of really high chip density like this one, where you're going to have underfill was, was a liquid that was squirted under that chip to flow around and encapsulate every ball mm -hmm. and then cured to be rock hard. Right. You know, that's going to be a nightmare when you actually try to replace Got the it. chip. 